Yeah, and 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 you know you've uh, you know Ubuntu is a sustainable project now. You 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 can't you you uh, you yeah, it's that's pretty amazing and uh, a huge adoption. Just talk about that journey because uh, you know the stamina that you've had in all of this. Um, you know, I remember uh, you know all my my 15, 14, 16 year old nephews. You know, immediately installing Ubuntu whenever they got new laptops. Um, but they were never paying, but now you've gone to that model. Um, and we'll touch on a lot of that later, but, but yeah, just talk about that journey uh, to, to sustain self-sustenance. Yeah. Um, the original plan was Netflix, Dropbox, Spotify, uh, you know, in, in a world where, where personal computing was windows um, and a view that I had that effectively the future business model of consumer software was um, subscriptions to services, not paying for the software. That was kind of radical in 2003, right? I don't think anybody else was doing that. Um, uh, I felt at the time that um, because of the tremendous sort of brooding presence of Microsoft in the consumer space, that if I didn't have a kind of a platform independent of Windows, that innovating on the business model side would just get you, you know, crushed or acquired, right? So, so to me, the, the sort of game plan was build those consumer services. Um, those will fund a free platform. But if you don't have a platform, then you're just going to essentially innovate and get, get absorbed into, into the Windows Borg. Um, what actually solved that was iOS and Android, not me. It was iOS and Android that essentially meant that there was no single platform company that could just pick off the innovation effectively the way Microsoft did in the 90s. To be clear, Microsoft's a very different company today. But as I was kind of looking at the landscape, 1999, 2001, 2002, I didn't see a way to build something like Spotify without ultimately getting confronted with, a, well, it can just go in as a feature of Windows problem, right? So I thought I needed Ubuntu to give birth to Netflix, Spotify, Dropbox, and all of those things. And in fact, I got sideswiped by the birth of iOS and Android, which I just didn't see coming for, for, for me. Um, and so got left with all the costs of making an operating system and hadn't yet got around to building those other things. Um, so then we had to figure out, okay, well, what do we do with it? And I tell you that story because for a while, for, for quite a few years, I didn't think I needed to worry too much about monetizing Ubuntu itself, right? Um, I needed to get it going, I needed to get it right, but I didn't need to worry about monetizing it. And so that's why I was quite cavalier about giving it away. I, I figured that, okay, I don't have to worry about that because I've got another plan. That other plan failed horribly. Um, and then I need to figure out how to um, build a, a commercial proposition that could sustain this thing that I now loved, right? Which was Ubuntu, lots of people loved it. And I felt, I felt like I'd given it to people and I didn't want to, fail right so stamina perhaps is one word uh, fear of failure and 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 and, and a, a reluctance to fail is another um and stubbornness is a third you know some, somewhere in all of that i found the strength to to carry on we also had this amazing community that was really leaning in um and an, an amazing team that really believed that you know, it was worth giving everything to to see if we could do it. Um, yeah, and, and they did.